Another problem, heat is transferred through a plain wall steadily at a rate of 800 watts. If the inner and outer surface temperature of the wall are 20 C and 5 C, respectively, the environmental temperature is 0 C, calculate the rate of exergy destruction within the wall. So we set up our brutal illustration. We have across this boundary, that boundary is the higher temperature boundary, 20 degrees C. This boundary of the wall is 5 degrees C. They don't give us any dimension like, oh, what the L is. That, that, that's unknown. They don't give us any dimension of the length of the thickness of the wall. But they tell us that uh, Q dot coming into the wall is uh, 800 watts. Did I pick the right symbol consistent with the textbook, cap Q with a dot on top and 800 watts? I teach heat transfer. When you get the heat transfer, guess what? It's not the different use. When you get the heat transfer, they'll have lowercase q for that in the textbook that we're currently using. So uh, I try to be consistent with the terminology and the notation that's in this book as I teach this class this semester. But sometimes it's a challenge for me because I'm coming out of heat transfer. All right. Now, when you have this heat transfer, do I have a transfer of entropy coming in here? Do I have an entropy transfer with it? A review of thermal one. Yeah, sure do. I have an entropy transfer. Hey, what is the equation for the rate of entropy transfer? That would be something like uh, Q dot divided by TB. Okay. Now, I didn't leave enough room, so I'm going to draw it down here. Now, the next concept is not only energy as well as entropy can be transferred across that boundary. We can have now the new concept, exergy can be transferred. Can we not? You say, okay, well, what would be my equation for the rate at which exergy is transferred in? Well, it's Q dot, not just divided by TB, but it's multiplied by... 1 minus T naught divided by TB. Why does the, the, the T naught, the environmental you know, temperature, the dead state temperature of 0 degrees C, why does that even come to effect? Well, long discussion, but go back and look at the definition. And what you're trying to do conceptually with this concept of exergy is I have a system. I have it at high temperature, high pressure, a good way to think of it. What's the maximum amount of work I can get out of it? Well, it's undergoing a process, and the final state to get the maximum work out would be the dead state. In equilibrium, thermal in equilibrium with the environment. That's why the T naught comes in. Come over here. Do you still have energy transferred out? If so, how much? No, it's like my bank account. $800 in per month, zero out. I'm becoming rich fast. No. What is the rate of energy transferring out of this slab? It's, trans it's a steady state problem. That's what it means by steadily. Heat is transferred steadily. What's coming out over here? 800 watts. Maybe you put this as Q dot 1 and you call this TB1 for location 1 and this is location 2 and you put this as Q dot, I didn't leave enough room, Q dot cap subscript 2. But it has the same magnitude, 800 watts. Hey, how about the entropy? Is there entropy being transferred? Sure. What is the equation for the entropy transfer? Q dot 2 divided by TB2. Do you know that TB2 is different than TB1? So when I run these numbers, the rate of entropy transfer will not be the same. It'll have some funny units. This one had units of watts. This will have watts per Kelvin. Can you see that as my units? Which one, this good clicker question, which one is larger? The A is that Q dot 2 divided by TB2 is larger, or answer B, Q dot 1 divided by TB1 is larger. Which one of those two is larger? If you answer C, that, mean, that means you're going to say they're the same, or that's equivalent to I don't know. All right, 30 seconds enough. Let's go ahead, close it out, show the results. Well, we're not unanimous, but um, 
you have the same numerator. Isn't the Q dot in both of these the same? But what about TB2? Isn't that lower? So wouldn't this ratio be higher? Yeah, that's right. That's one way of thinking of it. Also, what's happening inside of here? Sigma or sigma dot. What does that stand for? Entropy production because of irreversibilities. And so what's being brought in with entropy, this has to go out plus the addition of Q dot. Of sigma dot due to the entropy production the irreversibilities. Now we, that's all review. Now we go to exergy. So we have one minus T naught divided by T B two times Q dot. This is T B one times Q dot one Q dot two. True. Same question could be asked. Is the exergy transfer with the heat coming in at state one? Compared to the exergy transfer, let me put it like this, exergy transfer with the heat going out at state 2. This is the notation the book does use. Is it greater, equal, or less? Answer A, if you think that the exergy transfer with the heat coming in at 1 is greater. B, if you think that they're equal. Or C, if you think it's less. There you go. I just opened it up. Please answer your an enter your answer. Professor, these are tough questions. Well, I can tell by the responses that the class thinks it's pretty tough, right? Well, uh, because there were some, uh, uh, what is this sigma dot remind me? What is that again? Entropy production. What about, what about this? <laughs> there's some destruction. If there's some entropy production, we know there is some exergy destruction. So it's like this, you deposit $800 and the bank gives you a monthly $20 charge, destroying your money, taking it away. And even if you do a complete withdrawal at the end of the month because of the monthly charges, all you get out is $800, what, $780. That makes sense? The bank took some, destroyed your whatever money. So what went in is bigger, larger, transfer in. There's a couple of other ways to look at this. Think about this as a Carnot efficiency. And, uh, you know, the boundary temperature here is getting closer to the lower dead state temperature of zero. And so when hot and cold are very close to each other, getting closer and closer, that one minus goes to zero. It's smaller, smaller efficiency. So same Q, but this ratio is smaller on the out than on the in. All right. Okay. So how do we make this calculation? First, make sure and add 273. So this is 293 Kelvin. This is 278 Kelvin. And this is, I can do that one, 273 plus zero. 273 Kelvin. True? Don't put degree C when you need the absolute temperature in the calculations. Okay. So now we want to calculate that rate of exergy destruction. If the exergy balance gives us that the rate of exergy destruction is, is the difference between what came in, 1 minus T naught divided by TB1 times Q dot 1. Isn't that the flow of exergy coming in? And then we subtract 1 minus T naught over TB2 times Q dot 2. Now, hey, we, Q dot 1 and Q dot 2 are the same, 800 watts, and, and you, so you, you make the calculation. When you make the calculation, I think you have it on the next page. Yeah, you get uh, 40.2 watts if you put only the 273. Let's say you run with the 273.15, right? And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm using five significant digits on this conversion. Well, yeah, uh, it does make a little difference, you know, compare those numbers. But when you put this number to three significant digits and that number to three significant digits, they're the same. So sometimes you don't even notice it. But some problems are a little more sensitive to do you include the 0.15 or not. I'll try and summarize. For me, I try to run with it always with the 0.15. The vast majority of the book, not. You, either one, just do it. You will not lose any points. Either way. 
But sometimes a student will scratch their head and say, hey, how come I'm not getting the same number? It looks, you know, well, you're down there in the 1% or 0.1% difference. 